Hello friends, my name is Sarah. I am the artist and maker behind Denim and Rain. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we are going to be covering a hot topic. I'm going to be starting a small series here on YouTube covering discussions that are happening within the fiber and art worlds. Today's topic is going to be acrylic versus wool yarns. Um, yeah, I've seen this discussion happening quite a bit all over the place. Reddit, Instagram, YouTube, you name it. It is happening. Before we dive in to acrylic versus wool, a little disclaimer at the start. There will be no, absolutely no yarn snobbery happening here, okay? Look at you in the back. If you're not listening, yours now, ready? No yarn snobbery. It's not allowed. You knit with what makes you happy. Just because you knit with a acrylic yarn or a superwash yarn, that doesn't make you any less of a knitter or crocheter, okay? Just gonna put that out there before we get into it. So, the agenda for the video is we're going to go over the pros and cons of both acrylic and wool, starting with the cons, and then we'll lighten it up with the pros of each. And then we are going to go into some comments that you guys have had on the topic. I put up some little things on Instagram. You guys are very kind to fill those out for me. And then after that, we are going to talk about a little bit of the environmental impact of all the different fibers. So let's get into it. Okay, so I have my list on my phone because let's be real, I am not gonna remember all of this because I've got a terrible memory. Um, so let's get into the cons of acrylic yarns, aka okay, synthetic yarns. Um, so the first is it's bad because it's plastic, which we'll get into a little bit more at the end. But yes, it, um, for reasons, it is plastic, um, you know, microplastics when you wash it, all of those things. Um, acrylic doesn't feel very nice. This of course is going to depend on the type of acrylic that you purchase, but there are a lot of acrylics that are rather scratchy and they feel like, they feel like plastic because, well, they're plastic. <laughs> it can pill a lot. This is also true. I've had some acrylic yarns pill like nothing else, so that's cool. It does, this is probably, this is probably the biggest con for me and seem to come up probably the most um, in people's cons of acrylic. It doesn't breathe. Um, yeah, it's just not very pleasant. It traps in the temperatures and then, you know, it be because it traps in temperatures, it also traps odors. Like just sucks up those odors and whew, it's not very pleasant. Um, and it doesn't quite wash out as good as, you know, a wool would. Um, if I have an acrylic sweater, I try to only wear it when I know I'm not going to be doing a lot of labor or, you know, just gonna be hanging out in a fairly chilly location where I'm not going to overheat. Now let's get into the pros of acrylic. The first one is, it's budget friendly. This is probably the biggest pro for acrylic. It's super inexpensive. It's, yeah, very accessible. Um, it is good for allergies and young kids. I would agree with that. I probably knit most of my baby and kid items out of acrylic because yeah, the, for the next reason, it's easy to care for. You don't have to think about it. You just put it into the washer machine and the dryer, and you don't have to worry about it like shrinking up or, you know, felting or what have you. It is vegan friendly. There are those out there who don't want to use animal fibers and that's totally okay. Acrylic is a great option. It is good for beginners um, because, well, when you're new to knitting or crochet or weaving or whatever it is, um, sometimes you don't want to put a ton of money into a craft you don't know if you're going to end up liking or something that's going to stick. So why would you spend $200 on a sweater's quantity worth of yarn if you don't even know if that's what you want to do? So it's just a lot more but budget friendly and accessible for those who are beginners. The last thing is that it is readily available. Um, a lot of cities, towns across the America, world, wherever you, I don't know about other countries, but here in America, 
there's a lot of towns and places that don't have local yarn stores. Um, but they might have a Joann's or Michael's and they're going to have acrylic yarns. Um, and then even then you might not have those, but there are the few grocery stores that have yarn or Walmarts that have yarn. Our local grocery store has yarn in it. Not a great selection. It has some Red Heart stuff, but it's accessible. Um, not everybody can get online and not everybody can, you know, drive for miles and miles and miles to go get to a local yarn store. All right, let's get into wool. The cons of wool, because yes, there are cons to wool. Like acrylic, there are environmental impacts. Again, get into that a little bit later, but yes, there are environmental impacts for wool. Next, it can be scratchy. Again, with same as acrylic, it depends on the type of wool you get. Um, that will determine its softness or itchiness. Uh, those with allergies, it's not very great for them. Um, so it's, it's a con. It can be a little harder to get a hold of, which is kind of what I just talked about in the pros of acrylic. Um, it's not always super accessible to everybody in terms of where you live and purchasing and being able to get to it. The next one is it's not always budget friendly. Um, there are companies out there that have good, fairly decent, budget-friendly wools, but again, not always accessible to everybody. So yeah, I mean, not everybody can spend $28 a skein of yarn. So not very friendly to that pocketbook. Last one is probably the biggest one that came up is that it is high maintenance, which I would agree with. I have, you know, a couple of different sweaters that don't I can't just huck into the wash, so I have to like think about it and I have to make sure that I don't have it in an area where my family, sorry, giant floof flying through the air. Anyways, um, my family will is very helpful in that they like to help with laundry. Um, so yeah, I have to think about where I'm even putting my stuff after I take it off. I can't just like, at the end of the day, huck off a sweater and throw it somewhere because it could get thrown in the wash because that has happened. I have had a sweater shrink on me because it went through the washer and the dryer. But let's look at the pros of wool because uh, we love we love a good pro, right? First one is that it looks good. It does look good. I don't know what it is, but I mean, it also depends on what you knit. Let's be real. Like it, it depends on the finished object itself, but wool just tends to have just this look that just is nice. Pro is it is eco-friendly because it can biodegrade. A great thing, you know, you have a sweater that's past repair, a pair of socks that's pass repair because you know there's only so many times you can darn a sock and you know you toss it out you can do it with clear conscience knowing that it's going to eventually disintegrate and become part of the earth again which is awesome the next one is that it supports small businesses which is fabulous it's going to support far both farmers and then um, mills and then it goes to usually a small business who hand dyes or a local yarn store that is selling them from their business. It's just supporting local and small business economy, which we love. Next one is that it is warm. Oh my goodness. There is such a difference between putting on an acrylic sweater versus a wool sweater. There's just something cozy about it. And probably the best thing about wool is that it is breathable. It keeps you cozy and warm, but then once you start to heat up, it's not going to trap in that air. It's going to breathe with you, and then it's not going to trap any odors. It actually almost helps filter odors, and then because of its like almost self-cleaning properties, you don't have to wash it quite as often, which is fabulous. We love that. So those are just a couple of pros and cons of acrylic and wool. And now let's get into some of your guys' comments on the subject. Okay, we're going to start with the comments that are not for acrylic. So it's not as sustainable as natural fibers. It doesn't biodegrade and the production creates pollution. This it does. I hate that it doesn't breathe or block. Because yeah, acrylic doesn't quite block the same way wool does. And in my opinion, it's bad for garments. This can be true. It looks and feels cheap, they pill. Also true. Acrylic tears up my hands. I always have red lines where the yarn rubs and they can bleed. Um, holy cow, I've never heard anybody say this before. Um, ouch, I'm sorry that has happened to you. Um, 
I would say it's probably going to be the type of acrylic you are using uh, because there's going to be a difference between obviously your uh, yeah we'll get into that. the people who have comments for acrylic so let's get into those I use acrylic for gifts especially baby sweaters as they are easier for washing fabulous for giving to those people who don't don't like high maintenance items I love a good quality acrylic. I think it is better for kids wear and tear and hooking up in the wash. The acrylic world has really stepped up its game with some of these yarns. This is also true. Use what you can afford and that brings you joy. I love that one. That one's probably my favorite because yeah, that, did you, did you guys hear that one? Let me read it one more time for you. Just, just in case you didn't hear it. Use what you can afford and what brings you joy. Such a good comment. Um, and the last one is, it's great for the budget. There we go. We have it. All the good things for acrylic. Now onto the things, the comments against wool. It is itchy, scratchy, requires a lot of care. Got into that, didn't we? Um, it peels too much, so I don't use it. It is itchy, expensive, and overrated. Wow. It's fighting words right there. Hate the hand wash only and the cost to get quality wool. Now let's get into the comments for wool, okay? It lasts a long time and is breathable. It's my favorite part, the breathable thing. I switched to wool recently and love how they naturally repel odors. Right? It's awesome. Slides on the needles a lot better. Adore the softness, natural fiber, temperature regulating, and moisture wicking properties. So, those are your guys' comments for acrylic, against acrylic, for wool, and against wool. Now, let's talk a little bit about the types of yarn and why, and how they kind of factor into your guys' pros and cons and the pros and cons for wool versus acrylic. So, there are going to be varying types of both that are going to fit into these categories and make them so they don't fit your pros or cons or whatever. Um, so... The first, let's talk about acrylic. So your most budget-friendly acrylics like Red Heart One Pound or Karen One Pound are going to be probably the worst um, feeling. Those are going to be what causes the itchy, scratchy feeling. Now, I will say acrylic does soften up with washing and wearing. Um, not always, but typically that's what I've seen with acrylic yarns. And as far as the budget goes, you can get wool acrylic blends for around the same price that you can get a pure acrylic yarn, um, like Lion Brand Woolies, which is one of my favorite yarns. And I have a sweater made out of Lion Brand Woolies, and it breathes. Not nearly as much as one of my 100% wool sweaters, but it breathes um, a little bit more than a solid acrylic. So maybe keep that in mind. If you're on a tight budget, you prefer the acrylic yarns, but maybe want some of those good properties of wool, um, and you can huck it in the washer and dryer still, which is great. Um, but it's going to allow some of that breathing and non-odor trapping things that like acrylic has. So. There are good options for wool acrylic blends that are going to fit within your budget. Now, as far as some of those cons that came up for wool about it being itchy and scratchy, that also is going to depend on the type of wool you are purchasing. Um, obviously, if budget is a is the reason, you know, you're not able to like go for the super soft like merinos. Um, then I have heard a lot of great things about like the whole scarn, um, super soft, I believe is what it is called. It feels really scratchy at first, um, but then I guess when you wash it, it becomes very soft. I will be placing an order for some in the near future. Um, so I can actually review that because I've been very curious about it. I hear lots of people talk about it. Um, but there are budget friendly yarns like that, um, that I guess can soften up. Now, if you don't like the feel of yarns like that when you're knitting with them, you could always hank it up, wash it, and then put it back into a cake. It's a, one extra step, but it is something you could do if it's a concern for you as far as the itchiness while knitting. Um, and then for wear and tear on a garment. Um, 
Hate to break it to y'all, but both acrylic and wool pill, it's not the fiber. It's typically how it is spun, um, at least for wool. That is the case. It's how it's spun. It's how it's treated, etc. There's lots of reasons behind it. I'm not an expert on it. I'm not going to pretend to be. Um, there's a lot of people who are experts on it. So if you're looking for a specific yarn that doesn't a specific wool that doesn't pill, maybe do some research on what um, types of twist or treatments, etc., um, to look for in a non pilling wool. Um, and then, as far as acrylic, I do know there are some yarns out there that are anti pill. I do have some regular um, acrylic yarns, like I have Caron Simply Soft, that doesn't really pill too much. I most the most thing I notice with acrylics, and um, this is a store bought sweater that's acrylic it's not gonna focus on it but it has like it's not pilly it's just like fuzzy like it's bloomed it's puffed um so yeah that's something that I've noticed like that particular brand does it doesn't necessarily have little pill ball things on them um so yeah as far as pilling goes it's gonna depend on the yarn the specific brand and twist and etc on the yarns themselves both wool and acrylic pill it's a thing guys it's a thing now as far as wear and tear goes that's going to depend on a lot of things not just your fiber um for wool it's going to depend again on that twist if you're knitting something out of a single ply not even like twisted type yarn your garment's not going to wear. If you have like a, a full on sweater knit out of a single ply yarn, chances are it's going to wear through a lot quicker in your like elbows or what or around the wrist, things, places where you're like, like I do this to my, to my sweaters a lot. Um, so I will, I'd never knit a sweater out of a single ply because I'm hard wearing on my garments. Um, now if you're just like knitting a sweater out of something like a single ply and it's just for like wearing to special occasions or to work and you're not like chasing children around or working out in a garden then you'll probably be just fine. Um, and it also with the single ply you're going to have a lot more felting and pilling. Um, so again it's not necessarily that wool doesn't wear really hard it's going to depend on that twist in the ply of the yarn itself. Um, and then same for acrylic. I've had a sweater that, you know, I've had out of 100% acrylic for years now and it's worn beautifully. I love that sweater to death. Um, and then I knit the same sweater of another acrylic that was only a like a two ply and it didn't have a heavy twist to it and it's already starting to wear on the elbows. Um, so it's going to depend on the yarn itself, how much you're washing it, how hard you're wearing on it, etc. as far as how long it lasts. So your pros and cons, you have to weigh, it's going to depend on the individual brand, ball of yarn, the type of yarn, it just, there's so many variables. There's so many variables, like you could do a pro-con list on every single ball of yarn from every single company out there like it's doing wool versus acrylic is so broad a statement that sometimes it's <whistles> Ooh, sorry sometimes it's kind of hard to judge if you haven't been able to try all the things but who can really afford to try all the things I can't um, but now let's go ahead and get into the environmental impact of these fibers Okay, so now there are several different resources for these. I will put the links down below um, for the different resources that I have found regarding the environmental impact of the fibers um, that I'm going to be talking about. Um, there's so much information. I am just going to be kind of skimming over the top of it. If you would like to do more research, I highly suggest you visit a couple of these um, websites. There's also a couple of really great fiber artists um, who have blogs and stuff that cover a lot of these topics. One of them is Amy Schur. Um, she has a few post posts <laughs> that I read before doing these videos. I've done so much reading before doing this video um, as far as the environmental impact of all these different fibers. Um, before we get into that, um, the environmental impact of each one, because um, I'm going to kind of cover all the different fibers, not just wool and acrylic. 
Um, before we get into that, I just want to say that a lot of the sustainability in like knitting something when you once you create your own garment it's already a sustainable practice because you're it's slow fashion um the idea behind making your own clothes no or or home items like blankets pillows etc the idea behind it isn't to create something disposable the idea is to be creating something that you will keep forever right um so it's not about mm, this is such a hard topic you guys oh my goodness it's such a touchy one that's why it's called a hot topic um and I'm such I'm so bad at words sometimes <laughs> so it's like I want to be careful because I don't want to step on people's toes but sometimes you know toes are going to be stepped on whether you want them to or not it's just how it is anyways okay so basically if you're creating something that's meant to be forever, you can't pick it apart too much because it's already a sustainable practice to create something slow, to create something that's meant to be with you forever. The acrylic sweaters that I have knit will be with me as long as my wool ones will. If they start to tear or wear, I will repair them. And then yes, once my acrylic sweaters die, will I feel worse about having to throw them away? Yes, but I don't foresee them wearing completely out for years and years and years and years to come. Like, it's just not something that's gonna happen. And even then I might keep them for sentimental value. Who knows? Um, so it's the same with my wool sweaters. When I create a wool sweater, I don't create it to throw it away. I create it to wear it forever. So. Let's get into the environmental impact of these fibers. I have my list again because it's information and there's a lot of it. So I will be looking at my phone and writing the information off to you. So the worst fibers for the environment will start at the top. Um, disclaimer, I did have, I did read some contradicting information on the top one. I'm not sure how where they got their information from. Um, everything I've read has been pretty consistent with this though. So just disclaimer, disclaimer, do your own research, check out the links I've left um, below and then possibly do, see if you can find other ones. Um, so let's get into it. Um, the first one is cotton. Why is cotton bad for the environment? Well, let's see. Um, the first one is high water usage. Um, Apparently cotton drinks up a lot of fluids. Um, so there's that. But the worst thing is that they use harsh pesticides and chemicals to spray these crops. Um, chemicals sprayed on crops, it's they put it on our food, they put it on the fibers that are used to make our clothing. It's terrible. It drives me it drives me crazy. I can't stand it. Harsh chemicals like this are bad for the environment, it's bad for the bees. It's just, it's terrible. Ugh. It's what they do. It's bad for the environment. Let's move on. So synthetic fibers, acrylic, rayon, uh, polyamide, uh, polyester, which I think are the same thing. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. Anyways, um, it uses petroleum. Microplastics, um, which is something that happens when you wash um, acrylic or synthetic fibers in a washing machine or in water. It releases microplastics into the water system which pollutes the earth. Um, I did read that a way to avoid um, releasing so much microplastics would be to hand wash your garments um, because you're not going to be agitating it quite as much as a washing machine would. I know that kind of defeats the point of having an acrylic yarn, which is easy to just huck into the washer and dryer, but it is a way that you could help. Um, just put it in your sink with a little bit of water, gently wash it, and then rinse it. And that would release less microplastics into the water. And then the last thing is that it doesn't decompose, which of course, because it's plastic. All right, so the next one is wool, which I didn't realize would be quite quite so high on the list. Um, and there's a few reasons for that. Um, the first one being that um, 
large wool farms have to clear land for sheep, which means removing trees, bushes, um, affecting the environment. The next thing I thought was very interesting, I guess this is both sheep and cows, um, that there is methane in their poop. I guess they create methane, which I guess is, well, I know it is bad for the, um, uh, the environment, but oh my goodness, I didn't realize it was coming from their poop. Who knew? Um, so yeah, the methane in their poop causes a greenhouse effect. So there's that. Um, the next one would be um, chemicals used in the processing of wool, specifically superwash. Um, and then the water that is used for dyeing, um, both uh, commercially and for hand dye when you dye a wool yarn. If you're not doing it naturally, typically you're using an acid dye, which is a chemical. If you've never hand dyed before, you have to wear masks and gloves and stuff because, well, it's a, it's a chemical. Um, so when you're putting the acid dyes on the yarn and then say the yarn doesn't soak up all of that dye, usually the leftovers get put in the drain. So not exactly ideal for the environment. So now we have the fibers that are best for the environment. So if you are wanting to be 100% environmentally friendly, you want to knit with the most environmentally fi friendly fibers, then I would suggest you go for hemp or flax, which is linen. Um, yeah, so those I guess are the most sustainable, renewable um, fibers. You toss them out, they're going to biodegrade, etc. Um, obviously there's no there's not no environmental impact. They're still going to consume water. They're still going to be processed in a mill. So, which I mean, all of these fibers are. I mean, to be real, if you're wanting to be fully environmentally friendly, you need to live in a house that's like built on stilts so it doesn't mess with the ground. You're going to need to be naked because basically any clothes you wear are just, they're going to use something of some type of fiber or what have you. Just try to do your best. You don't need to live every moment panicking and stressing about, oh, but what about this? What about this? I think we should all try to do our best um, in any ways that we can to take care of this earth that we have been given. That's what we were told to do. We were given this earth and I believe we were supposed to take care of it as best we can. And that um, does not include consuming mass amounts of things and then throwing them away. So purchase whatever yarn makes you happy, create an item and make that item to last. Don't just purchase yarn to make things that you have no intention of using. That's where waste comes in. So buy that acrylic yarn, buy that wool yarn and create and enjoy for as long as you possibly can. Another thing, just remember that you don't know somebody's history, you don't know their past, you don't know what they're, why they're creating with whatever fiber they're creating with. They may be creating with wool because acrylic irritates their, their skin. They may be creating with acrylic because they're vegan. They may be creating with acrylic because they have wool allergies. You don't know why somebody is creating with something, so just be respectful and kind to those around you. No microaggressions. Oh, I would never knit with acrylic. Oh, I would never spend that money on wool. Just be conscious, be kind, be courteous. It's a hot topic. Be, feel free to discuss these things with one another, one another, but be kind whilst doing it. So anyways, that's my little snippet of this hot topic. Let me know all of your guys' thoughts and opinions on the subject because I know you have them. Let me know down in the comments. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe and let me know if there's any other topics you would like to see in the future. Have a great day, you guys.